Before the abuse, my daughter was very outgoing. The ham of every photo, very beautiful, adventurous. Probably the best way to describe her is that she was fearless. It was my husband, her stepfather, somebody that I chose to bring into our family. She was 10. I no longer ate, I didn't sleep. I was in the worst time of my life. I'd gone through so much and I'd been seeing my family go through so much. I, I really gave up and everybody around me knew that. She was showering with her clothes on. She was always very afraid. Always had to check and make sure all the doors and windows were locked at night. Lots and lots of nightmares before they came. BACA stands for Bikers Against Child Abuse. We're an organization of bikers that come together for one cause. To empower children that have been victims of child abuse to no longer be afraid of the world that they live in. They might have you know, anywhere from 20 to 50 motorcycles roll up. These children become part of our family. They get their own road name, they get their own cut, they become a biker. Anytime they're afraid, they just call us and we're gonna be there. If they need escorts to court, to therapy, to school, if it takes us having to stand outside and guard their house all night so they can sleep, then that's what we'll do. When I met Fa, she was just a scared little girl. When I first saw them, I remember going out onto the balcony and looking over and there's just all these bikes. There was these huge tall men and they were in their vests and their boots, huge beards and strong looking women. It looked very tough. We're a rough lot and we are scarier than their perpetrator. We are scarier than their demons. It works. It was incredible to see my daughter for the first time in almost three years relax. We set up outside on all four corners of the property and let her know that no one was going to come into that house and harm her because they would have to go through us. And they stayed there in shifts all night long, all day long. I'm not sure which night it was. It was maybe 2 o'clock in the morning. She said she just couldn't sleep. So finally, I got a sleeping bag off my bike, and I put it in the trunk of her mother's car in the garage. She climbed in the trunk of the car, curled up in a ball, and went to sleep and slept all night. We came back and did the same thing as she was getting close to trial, and she was getting nervous about having to testify. I was testifying against my stepdad. And I looked over, and I saw my stepdad just staring at me. And I felt like I could have passed out or died just from his glare. And I looked over and Baca's there and they're just sitting there with their thumbs up, giving me the emotional support that I needed. Against all odds, she got up, did what she had to do, and put this guy away. I remember seeing the look on her face when they brought him out in shackles. It was uh, a look of relief. They were there keep me safe through the trial, but they were also there to make sure that I could stay happy. I would hop on the back of Tombstone's bike and they would take me to school and all the bikers that were there would set off other people's car alarms because of how well their bikes were and I'd be walking around with my helmet and my vest on and people would see me pull up because I was with so many bikers and everyone would be like, who are you with? And I'd be like, oh, those are my bodyguards. I felt like I was the coolest person ever. <laughs> The transformation in them is physical, it's, it's visual. You see them going from an abused child to an empowered child. They 
smile more, they laugh. It's really something to see. They get that any one of us would gladly take a bullet for them. Tombstone felt like a father figure to me. I knew I was family. Baca pretty much turned me into the woman that I am today. I've been able to overcome so many things that I know I wouldn't have been able to without them. She ended up graduating with honors. She's in college full time and working full time. I'm very, very happy. I'm moving up in my life. It is probably the most important role I've played in my life. These kids have no one, and we're it. We're that single strand of barbed wire between hell and happiness for them. Never ever thought that I would be a part of an organization like this or any, any kind of organization. I've always been kind of a loner. These kids get to you. All these kids are our heroes. We're, we're just the guys that ride around and try to give them some support. I'm in it for life. <laughs>